everyone, it's Jack from Cultaholic.com and you know what time of the week it is. It's Friday Friday. It's mandatory to get down on Friday and that's because it's time for my Wrestlers of the Week. That's right, I couldn't be more excited. What a week it's been. Comfortably the best week in Wrestlers of the Week for, for quite a long time. Maybe of the whole year, actually. It's been a very, very high quality week. Not just in any one promotion either. All over the place. Loads to talk about. Absolutely loads. And loads of honourable mentions. So let's just run through them now. We're not going to be able to spend much time on them, but there's quite a lot. So we start with Penta. Great match against Kenny Omega on Dynamite. Hangman and Wardlow, also a great match on Dynamite. Seth Rollins and Murphy, great match on SmackDown. Sheamus beat Matt Riddle to get into the Survivor Series team on Raw. Uh, we have Jey Uso as well for him getting his ass kicked by Roman Reigns at LNSL. Orton and Drew, that's how high quality this week is. I've not been able to squeeze Orton or Drew into the top 10, even though they had a very good match. You could question the booking though, so I'm gonna justify that as why I've left them off the top 10. Uh, also, Johnny Gargano winning the North American title at NXT Halloween Havoc. So quite a lot there already. So now we'll just get straight on with number 10 and we're going from one Gargano to the other because picking up one point this week is Candice LeRae. Now obviously Candice didn't win the NXT Women's Championship at Halloween Havoc, but she main evented what was a very strong show and surpassed the bar that had already been set. It was my favorite match of the night, I think. Candice chucked herself all over the place. She took some horrible bumps, especially right at the end. Huge effort from Candice LeRae. She looked great in her Halloween costume as well, looked very evil, very heelish as well, but with the unmistakable uh, Candice LeRae aesthetic going on, I suppose. I think she was like a, what was it, like a poison fairy or something? It was cool. Uh, and she had a bit of help from a shadowy figure. Now reports have indicated that this mysterious, like the character from Scream that came out and helped her, people have indicated that this was supposed to be Indy Hartwell, but she had to self-isolate because she came into contact with somebody and the whole pandemic and everything. So she wasn't available. So we don't actually know who was underneath this getup. Uh, Meltzer has suggested that maybe it's just gonna end up being Indy Hartwell because the, the figure never unmasked, did they? They were fine. Uh, so they can just make that, they can wreck on that, and, and that was always Indy Hartwell, I suppose. But that was only a tiny part of what was a very, very good match. And at one point, I really did think that Candice was going to win, uh, especially when she got boosted up to the top of the ladder and then was just lying there, then woke up, then realised where she was and was reaching for the title. But then obviously, Io Shirai shoved her off the ladder, she crashed through a ladder bridge on the outside of the ring and didn't win. But a phenomenal performance. Uh, Candice is great. I would not have been annoyed if she'd won, but I understand why she didn't. I think on balance, it was probably the correct decision for her to lose, but I wouldn't have minded either way. That's how good the match was, and that's how good she is. But she only gets one point. That's how good this week's been. Number nine, let's go, let's cross the divide and go to AEW Dynamite, where in the main event, Kenny Omega won the match and progressed to the final of the number one contenders tournament. And in doing so, picks up two points on this week's Wrestlers of the Week. That little action I did there, uh, I regret that massively. But awkward gestures aside, uh, I, I think this match was excellent. I had one little gripe with it, which was that after Penta did the whole arm wrenching spot, Omega shouldn't probably have hit the one-winged angel to win the match. The forgiving uh, element of this, I suppose, is that even though he did hit the one-winged angel with his injured arm, he then sold it immediately afterwards and, and showed that it was actually really hard for him to, to do. So I feel like that makes it sort of okay. Really strong showing again from Omega, though, who's just picking up steam as a singles wrestler once again. Uh, I think he's going to win the tournament. I think he will beat John Moxley, and I think we're looking at the next AEW World Champion. Uh, whether or not you like that, it's up to you. I think it would be quite good, and I don't begrudge Kenny Omega winning that belt at all. With that said, let's focus on this match with Penta a little bit. Really good stuff. This was, I kind of want to compare this to a Kenny Omega New Japan match on Fast Forward. There wasn't the long gaps in between as we'd normally see from like an epic New Japan encounter, because they didn't have that much time to work with. They were the last match on, TV time was running out, so they just had to go for it, and it made for a really interesting match. It's great to see Kenny in singles mode again, having time to just build up all of these combos and sequences and everything that kind of gets changed a little bit when the tag team the tag team dynamic excuse me is introduced so we got like surprise v triggers out of nowhere and all kinds of stuff that kenny does so well the terminator dive the chop battles with penta every element of this match i feel kenny really excelled at but now we're going to leave kenny behind in the number nine position and we're going to move to impact where they had their biggest show of the year at the weekend bound for glory not the best received show, top to bottom. People kind of thought it was either all right or a little bit worse than average, but everyone seemed to kind of agree 
that the main event was the best match and that it had the biggest result as well. That result brings us to number eight on this week's list, picking up three points, and it's the new Impact World Champion, Rich Swan. Now, just purely from my own personal, I guess, opinion on the booking of Impact, I would have liked to have seen Eric Young hold that belt for a bit longer. I thought he was doing a great job as a heel champion, having just recently returned to the company. But at the same time, I guess Rich Swan does deserve it as a babyface. It's a simple story, you know, the, the babyface underdog coming up to beat the heel champion. And, and it's a tale as old as wrestling itself. And it works, you know, when it's done right. This was done right. The ending, well, right, so I saw a gif going around of the ending. A lot of people criticised just the ending because Eric Young kind of moved himself into position on the canvas to take the last move, the Phoenix Splash. But at the same time, that was just one part of a match that was on the whole very impressive. Where do we go from here, though? I don't know where Rich Swan goes from here. I don't know who he faces next. I guess as a baby face, he could face someone like Eddie Edwards in a face versus face clash. Or he could face a heel in a more traditional feud setup. He could possibly face Eric Young again for a little bit. I don't know where they're going to go with this, but it'll be interesting to see. I mean, having a new champion often gives a promotion a little boost of momentum, and I hope that's the case here, even though I don't personally agree with the title change. But congratulations, Rich Swan. Good match, good main event, and you are now the Impact World Champion. And even more importantly, you've got three extra points on wrestlers of the week. Number seven, not somebody who won a new title this week, but actually someone who lost their title this week. We're gonna talk about the former SmackDown Women's Champion, Bayley. It sounds weird saying that because Bayley's really become ubiquitous with the SmackDown Women's title. At the same time, if you're gonna lose it after such a dominant reign, you've gotta lose it in grand fashion. And that's exactly what happened at Hell in a Cell. Bayley clashed with Sasha, of course, in a feud that had been really, you know, intensely built up. And I enjoyed the match on the whole, I thought it was the best match of the pay-per-view. A lot of people, I think Brian Alvarez, chief among them, were criticizing the whole chair aspect, like Bailey came out with that chair with the spray paint on it. That's the chair she wanted to use to win the match. The chair got knocked outside of the cell, she had to retrieve it later on, and she kept going for that chair, even though there was various other chairs under the ring. Now, I understand that, but I thought the rest of the match was superb. The pair really did a lot. They had a lot to remember, and they did so. I mean, wrestlers have insane short-term memory. I don't know how they do it. But also, a lot of the stuff they did was quite challenging, quite difficult spots, quite a high level of difficulty on the spots, but they nailed pretty much all of them. The only one I can think of that didn't go to plan was when Bailey taped the two kendo sticks together and made like a little bridge with them, but it looked flimsy, and I don't know what they were gonna do, but it didn't look like it was gonna work. So wisely, and this shows Bailey's experience and how intelligent a wrestler she is, she just left it and called off the spot and they didn't do it, which is a really good decision because it didn't look like it was gonna go well. And I think we need to give credit to Bailey for that. On the whole, I think the title change was the right decision. I was a little bit salty going into this one because what I wanted was for Sasha to go away for a while, come back when the Rumble, face Bailey at WrestleMania, and then, you know, then it would have all been really epic and grand. I would have even liked to have seen them have just a singles match with no stipulation five years on from their epic takeover Brooklyn encounter. But at the same time, it was a good enough match that I can overlook that and appreciate what they did. Number six, we are going outside of WWE, partly to AEW and partly to the NWA because we're talking about the new NWA World Women's Champion. Serena Deeb. Deeb had two massive matches this week, massive for different reasons. The first was against Thunder Rosa, and it was massive because she won the NWA Women's Championship. The other one was against Layla Hirsch on Dynamite, and it was massive because it was her unveiling in front of a bigger audience as the new NWA Women's Champion against a relatively unfamiliar opponent who also got over really, really well. In fact, she should have been an honorable mention, 100%. Layla Hirsch, very impressive. But Hirsch didn't win the match. It was Serena Deeb who won the match. And I was so struck watching this by just how well-rounded Serena Deeb is as a wrestler. She is a proper professional wrestler. I mean, everything they did, she excelled at. You know, she can do the mat work, she can do the rolling, she can do the technical stuff, she can do the amateur wrestling, but also she can do the high, like spots, the high, slower paced pro wrestling spots and make them convincing and sell properly afterwards and bump well. She can do stuff on the outside. My laptop's just sent me a notification. Anyway, she's really good is what I'm saying. And you know, in the match as well, I feel like Dee was really selfless. She didn't just get herself over by wrestling really well. She also helped get Layla Hirsch over by selling appropriately for her, giving her a lot of opportunity in the match to get her own stuff in. And I was just really impressed by both of them. I thought they were both fantastic. I want to see a lot more of them on Dynamite, but it was Serena Deep who won. And in a week when she also became the NWA Women's Champion, I have to give her a lot of points for that. Next up, number five, we're going back to Hell in a Cell and we are going to the man who is still the WWE Universal Champion. In a hard match to rank or to, to evaluate because it wasn't so much a great match in terms of work rate, but it was great in terms of drama 
and sports entertainment, if you will. Uh, so I'm going, for, I'm going for Roman Reigns in this spot, I and mean, I think he fully deserves it. Reigns has been like the best thing about SmackDown, uh, the best thing on Raw or SmackDown, to be honest, since turning heel. He's been phenomenal, and this feud with Jey Uso has been brilliant, and it all came to a head at Hell in a Cell. Now, the match followed the same formula, really, as their last one, with a few added touches. Of course, there was the Cell stipulation. I don't think the Cell needed to be there, but the I Quit stipulation did, and it added a whole new dimension to this match. Roman dominated, but on the, the rare flashes when Jay got a little bit of hope and, or like a super kick out of nowhere or whatever, it was really compelling. They had the strap situation where they were both tied together and just going for it. Then they both choked each other out at different points, but didn't quit. And then of course, Jimmy got involved and Roman attacked him, thereby ensuring that Jay would, would give up to save his brother. And it was excellent. It was very good. Um, not as good as Sasha Bailey, in my opinion, but you know, Bailey lost, she's getting less points. Roman won, he's getting a few more, and his acting was superb. He was really compelling in this. He really dragged you along in the story. He was, you know, at first vengeful and a dick, then later on kind of realized what he was doing and broke down and said, I don't know who I am anymore, and then turned it all back in an instant and was a full heel again and won the match in unscrupulous fashion. Now, afterwards as well, it was really interesting because when he's been saying, I'm the tribal chief, I'm the head of the family, I'm the head of the table, you kind of think, well, that's just his own heelish bluster. No, that's legit now. The Wild Simones were there and they acknowledged Roman as head of the family and the Usos have been cast out unless they accept him as head of the family. Oh, high drama, very good stuff. I'm just trying to think of another Samoan who can possibly have achieved more than Roman Reigns and can come back and really take it to him. And I think we're all thinking of the same person. It's Rikishi. Number four this week, and still the NXT Women's Champion after that excellent match with Candice LeRae. Tables, ladders, and scares, of course, was the stipulation. It's Io Shirai. As I've mentioned, this match was superb. Io had the entrance with Poppy. I'm Poppy, ooh. Still weird, man. She's a weird girl, I'm scared of her but very effective in this setting, this Halloween Havoc scenario. Uh, and it was nice to see her. She works really well with Io coming down to the ring together. They kind of play off each other. It's really cool to see. Io's phenomenal, man. She may be my favorite women's wrestler at the moment. She's brilliant. Every match she has is a good one. Sometimes they're very good, as in this instance, if she's really feeling it and is matched up with a good opponent. But generally, even her lowest baseline is fantastic. I also think that she's still probably on balance deserves to be NXT Women's Champion. There's more feuds that can be had, possibly with Ember Moon, possibly with Tony Storm. Uh, maybe another one with Rhea Ripley if she gets back. She got a big win at Halloween Havoc as well, didn't she? So I can't wait to see who she faces next. The, the good thing is that the NXT women's division has consistently been so strong since like over the past like five or six years now, maybe even longer. It's always been a very strong division and they always have a champion who really represents it well and can match up really well with a lot of different other people in the division. I think they are continuing that with Io Shirai here. And I have to say as well, as well as being excellent in the ring. Her persona is fantastic too. She's a bit unhinged. She's quite crazy. And I like it. As, as a baby face, I think it suits her very, very well, as well as it did with her being a heel. So I have no issues with this result at all. It was my favorite match of Halloween Havoc. And, you know, long may her reign continue. Number three, I'm the new SmackDown Women's Champion. The best match on Hell in a Cell, I reckon. And the only real result that could possibly have happened, wasn't it? It's Sasha Banks. Now, I've already talked about how excellent the match was in general and why it was good and why Bailey was good, but Sasha really was the standout for me here, not to take away from Bailey, but Sasha did what Sasha does. She chucked herself about, she took some huge bumps. I think she might be the best bumper and seller, maybe in WWE at the moment. She's certainly up there. She's one of the best, if not the best. Also, she had a unique, innovative offense, very Shima-esque as well with all the meteoras that she loves to hit. But she doesn't just hit the same meteora. Every single one that she hit in this match was in a different scenario, sometimes against the cage, sometimes a running one off the apron. Like, she just mixed it up so well. And it's just such a good wrestler all round. So I think it's great that she's SmackDown Women's Champion. One thing, one thing that I do worry about is the fact that now as champion, she might have to talk a bit more. And promos on her strongest aspect, I suppose. She's far more a worker than she is a promo figure, but at the same time, she's got charisma. There's a difference between cutting a good promo and having charisma. Sasha's got charisma, she's just got it. Whereas her promo game is something that could be improved. Maybe it will, maybe it will be improved. Maybe they'll find ways around it. I mean, she's not as bad as I've made her sound there, is she? But I think as long as this is a work rate heavy title reign, we could be in for a very enjoyable time. So I can't wait to see what she does. This match was great. It was, it was a very good match. Probably one of WWE's best pay-per-view matches of the year. I know it's been a weird year with all of the 
you know, the no fans pay-per-views and all that sort of stuff. But I really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed this feud on the whole, even though it took a while to get going. And I think now that we've had the payoff, it's made us all very excited to see what happens next. Speaking of next, it's time to go to NXT, Nick, NXT. UK. Number two this week is Ilya Dragunov. If you haven't seen already, if you haven't seen the match, which is available on the network right now, or if you haven't just seen it mentioned on Twitter, like, last night we had a match of the year candidate, and, and a, certainly a WWE match of the year candidate, 100%. The main event of NXT UK saw Walter defend the NXT UK Championship. It's no longer the WWE Championship or UK Championship for whatever reason. It's now the NXT UK Championship, which doesn't make it sound as big a deal, but whatever. Uh, he was defending that against Ilya Dragunov, and Dragunov, man, he took it to Walter. This match was, oh man. First of all, it was so indie. Like, it was such an indie match to be happening in WWE. Fantastic stuff though, absolutely phenomenal. Like one of the stiffest matches I've seen in a long time, inside or outside of New Japan. Dragunov has all the babyface fire in the world. They're shouting and swearing at each other in German in this like empty arena. It was bizarre, but fantastic. Shout out to Chris, the referee. Good friend of mine, lovely guy. He did really well too. Um, I'm just so proud of him. But no, th this match was great. And Dragunov's performance was excellent. And I really wanted Dragunov to win, man. Not so much because I greatly prefer him to Volta or anything. I just think that I was swept up in the story of the match. I just wanted the baby face to win because Volta was being so vicious. Dragunov was being so brave. And when he was proper coming back and I like, actually giving it to Volta, I was like, yes. Come on, you can do this. And in the end, he couldn't do this. You know, he couldn't, he fell short, he lost. Got choked out, in fact, actually, and he was a, like a bloody mess on the canvas and had to get carried out. But he tries best. I don't know what's next, man. I don't know what's next for Volta. I know what I'd like to see happen next. You know what, I'll just tell you what, it, what, I, what I think should happen next. So we've seen that Rampage Brown's coming to NXT UK soon. Dude, if Rampage comes in and just batters Walter, I will be so, so happy. That will be phenomenal. I would love it to death. He deserves it as well, and I greatly want to see it happen. But for now, we all have to take our hats off to Dragunov. Fantastic performance from the Russian slash German machine. He is fantastic. I want him to win a belt in the future in WWE. He more than deserves it. I'd love to see him on the main roster or in NXT United States version. But for now, great match. Everyone is rightly talking about it as a potential match of the year, and... There's not much more else to say about Dragunov. Fantastic stuff, nine points. But now number one and my wrestler of the week. Well, you'll have, you'll have guessed it already, won't you? Because I just talked about how brilliant the match was and still the NXT UK champion. It's Volta. These two have incredible chemistry. They've wrestled a lot before in WXW and stuff. Uh, and you could see it. You could see they weren't afraid to just kick the crap out of each other, man. It was vicious at times, especially from Volta. Dragunov was being stiff as well, but Volta's incredible like height and size just led to him looking dangerous, man, like a bear. Like obviously the big chops that he does, fantastic, but he was raking his boot against Dragunov's face, massive lariats and that sort of thing, man. It looked brutal. It looked real at times. It was a proper fight. And I, th I once again would recommend, if you haven't seen it, even if you're not a big fan of NXT UK, you don't need to be, just watch the main event of this week's show, man. Oh God, it was quite something. Now, Volta, as I mentioned, is still the NXT UK champion. He could realistically have lost here. I guess maybe they want to wait until fans are back. Maybe they want to give it to Bala. That was all teased, of course, wasn't it? Before the pandemic shut everything down. I'd love for it to go to Rampage Brown, obviously, but I'm very biased. Yeah, I just, I just think that should happen. I've distracted myself again with the Rampage talk. But I can't complain about Volta retaining the title here. I mean, what a reign it's been, even though it's been interrupted by the pandemic. The win of the belt against Pete Dunne, phenomenal match. The victory over Tyler Bate, incredible stuff. Now this one against Dragunov, man. You can't stop Volta when he's on a roll like that. He's one of the best main event wrestlers in the world today. And for that reason, and for how good this match was this week, he is my wrestler of the week. Now, of course, let's take a look at that lovely Little League table. A lot of newcomers to the list this week, so it, there's not been that much change at the top. There's still Cody, Moxley, Takagi, and Omega kind of ruling the roost at the moment. But as we go a little bit further down, we'll see the likes of Io Shirai in joint 12th place alongside Tetsuya Endo. Shirai could still rise a lot higher, of course, because she is still NXT Women's Champion. We go further down, we see the likes of the G1 Climax winner, Kota Ibushi, and the champion who he'll face in January, Tetsuya Naito. So not a lot to report in terms of the league table this week, but it could all change in due course. And that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching this video. I've been Jack from Coldaholic.com. Leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below, match recommendations, that sort of thing. Uh, and stay safe out there, stay positive, and I'll see you very soon.